everyone and welcome for those joining me today thank you so much for spending this time with me and for those of you that just keep coming back for more i am truly grateful for everyone and for all of you my name is desiree and we are on video four of our first series focusing on ornaments and tags now remember we're just taking this concept digging into our stash and creating an ornament or a tag. Yes, we can take cards. So these same techniques and principles that I use, you can apply to a card front. Absolutely, you can do that. But I wanna focus on the fact that we can take our stash and stretch it, turn it into something else. So again, don't necessarily focus on the products, focus on the techniques that we're doing or the type of products that we're using so that you can create your own cord cards or ornaments and tags. These are the products that I will be using today. This is an old one. I can't even, this came out of a magazine when I first started paper crafting. Now I first started back I think in 2006 2007 right around there and I just happened to be at Joann's and saw this within a magazine I couldn't even tell you what magazine so this is old but I found it I love it yes it is a Christmas rose but dig into your stash maybe you have another type of floral image any floral image can do it doesn't matter what that image is change the colors instead of if you pull a daisy instead of using the yellow like we would for a daisy use a deep red use a deep purple perfectly fine for a christmas tag ornament or card just by changing those colors so dig into that stash but just want to use this. I'm going to be using the largest scalloped from the Waffle Flower Scallop Circle dies that I have here. And then I'm going to be using the Merry Christmas uh, Sentiment by Paper Rose. And it's simply called the Merry Christmas Layered Metal Die. Now, as long as the products are available, I will link them down below, the main ones that I'm using. But again, I truly am encouraging you, dig into your stash and have fun. Dust some of them off. I know I dusted this one off and let's have fu some fun. Now, just a few disclaimers. Video could be long. Absolutely. We're going to switch over to voiceover, but again, long. I want to show you as much of the process as I can. And I think that's it. And then I'll come back and we'll talk about the product that we made. Now, this tag is going to be different. We are, oh, and I'm going to use a two inch circle nested die you could use if you have a punch that's two inch circle that will work just fine as well but you might not be able to position it where it needs to go um, but it should be okay so we are going to make a tag however we are going to make a tag for a bottle and i'm going to cover up the label i don't know if i can show this but it's a bottle so that's what we're doing it's a bottle it's a wine bottle Okay, it's a good wine bottle. <laughs> All right, so we are going to make a tag for the top of our bottles. Okay, so let's go. Let's get started. Gather your supplies that are close to that and let's have some fun. So I'm starting with some craft cardstock that measures eight and a half by like three and a quarter. I do have a quarter rounder here. You don't have to do that. You can skip this step. Um, I just think it kind of finishes it. And then I have these large scalloped pieces that I've die cut. I'm going to score these about three inches down from one end and then I have 
a two inch circle die here. Now, if you have a punch, um, a hand punch, that will work just fine. It just doesn't go down as far as where you can place a, um, a, a freestanding die, a nested die. These are the perfect width for my small honeybee cutter here. Um, I love this. This is like a workhorse for me. I have really put it to the test. Um, and I'm just cutting, putting that uh, die in the center of that opening and running that through. Again, working in that production style cutting my shape first with my paper trimmer, then doing the die cutting of the hole. Um, I just feel instead of working at one at a time, I get more done this way. Just saying. Using, uh, folding these over to get the score line set and burnishing that. And now we have our pieces already. Here's our wine bottle. I know I'm trying to, to cover it. It's apothic red. It's awesome. Um, just saying. And it's just got a nice weight to it when you put your scallop on there. So now I have this. I got this stamp set, like I said before, from a magazine, and I absolutely love it. And we are just going to go to town stamping our images. I'm going to be stamping a bunch. I'm using a piece of cream uh, cardstock, heavyweight cardstock, and just stamping a bunch. So like I over dye, I will over stamp as well. I knew that I wanted three flowers for each one and I had five tags. So I know this is the number that I need here. I'm going to be using two shades of Altenew inks and we're going to make these uh, like a red. Um, they'll end up being a, a deeper red. This is a coral color and we're just putting that into the center and then the final center will have um, a deep cherry red going in there. And then here's our final color. And then we're going to do the same thing with the leaves. So there's a small leaf and a large leaf. So there's only two sizes and you will see me stamp and die cut a bunch. So for that, we all know how that goes. I am just going to turn on some music and you can enjoy watching me stamp. Talk to you on the other side.
that we have, that was a lot of stamping. Now that we have all of our stamping and die cutting done, now we are going to put our pieces together. So I have our sentiment and I'm going to back the sentiment with two pieces of heavyweight cardstock. And I chose that to be white as well. Um, it's the same color as our scallop in the back. So our sentiment, I believe, if I remember, yes, paper rose, and I chose a deep burgundy red for that. And I'm only going to put one layer. Usually when I have a die, or I find when I have a die that's got the shadow or the cloud, the background, and then you have the sentiment on top, I put more layers in the background than I do for the sentiment itself. I've already added the dimension to the background. Um, and I'm just afraid that sometimes I'll get something caught, you know, up on that sentiment if I have a lot of layers uh, going on there. So you kind of get the same effect, not completely, but kind of, sort of. Yeah, that's the technical term. So we're just adhering those. And again, using a small amount of glue so that it doesn't come out. But if it does, it dries clear. It's matte. No one sees it. That's the awesome thing. Reverse tweezers, again, third arm, able to hold the sentiment so I'm not getting glue all over the place except where it needs to be. And then we're going to set this. Now, you know, something funny happens here as I'm filming. So, you know, because we always have to have one, right? Looking at the placement, we're going to have the sentiment towards the top. We're going to have our floral down below that. So this is what they are going to look like. And then we are going to have fun tucking in our leaves for each of our images. I am, even though I added that layer, I'm going to add some double-sided foam squares to the back of the sentiment. Okay, and what is one of my videos without me running out of time to record? Yeah, that's what I did. So I apologize. What you didn't see me do is attach the pieces. So you saw all the stamping, we die cut them, we put our sentiment together. This here is the largest scalloped that I used, and all I did was just layer them. I have two of the flowers down flat onto the scalloped. I propped the center one up with a foam square. I made sure that the two centers of the flowers just went tucked in up underneath the H of Christmas and the M of Christmas. Uh, toggle this in between the two, push this up a little bit to the top, and then just had fun with the leaves, tucking them in. You saw, I only, when I do something like this, when I have a lot of layers and textures with the florals, I put glue towards the center. This way I can tuck things in underneath and I won't have to, you know, peel it back up. Same thing when I add my double-sided foam to this. You know, I leave an edge open so that I can tuck. We've got this scored. This is eight and a half by three and a quarter. Our base here, this was scored at three inches along the eight and a half inch side. I used a two inch circle nested die so that I could get that centered. You could use a hand punch. You just run the risk of it being close to this. And this makes, and you can write your message here on the other side. You could put another scallop here on the inside if you want. But you can see that this, I'm not gonna worry about if you see the bottle or not now. But you can see this fits perfectly over our bottle. Um, it covers the front of the bottle nicely. Um, and it's a beautiful way to simply decorate a wine bottle. 
Um, now you can see this wine bottle looks like this. It will work with any wine bottle. All right, this will always angle. And the weight of our die cuts lets that lay flat. So here I'm putting that bottle straight up to you and you can see it is laying flat against that bottle instead of you know popping out just a little bit so added a little bit of sparkle by adding some gems when i could get to all three centers if not just two and then i added some sparkle pen to the merry christmas that's optional if you don't have those items don't worry about it no stress you could add some white gel pens to the merry christmas to make that stand out Whatever it is that you have in your stash, use it. And again, you do not need to have a Christmas floral. You can use a daisy. You can use an anemone. You can use a mum. You can, whatever it is, a snowdrop, a morning glory. Just change the colors. Change the colors to what your favorite Christmas colors are. Um, or just have your sentiment be those colors. So I do apologize that I ran out of ah, time, but what's a video without me doing that? At least once, right? Let's just hope it's only once during all five series. Yes, lucky me. Yay! But again, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you gave you another idea. It's a different type of tag. Um, maybe though you don't give out alcohol or other types of bottles it doesn't have to be an alcohol bottle that you do as well it could be a sparkling cider you know all of those wonderful things that are available but you could also just use the scallop put another scallop behind it punch a hole and that makes a beautiful tag as well tags do not have to be rectangular they can be any shape that you want them to be if you want to check out the products, the main products that I used, I will have them listed below. I do know, though, I will not be able to find the listing for the Alta New stamp set that I used that came from a magazine subscription many years ago. Many years ago. Okay, so I just know that won't be available. But again, this is all about digging into your stash and just having fun creating your art. If you have any questions, please make sure you leave those down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe. Love to have you here. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and ring the bell and hopefully you'll be notified. Yeah, I'm just saying. It's, you know, it's a gamble, but it's fun. Okay. But most of all, enjoy the art that you are creating. You are taking something, changing it into something else or turning it into something else. You're taking an object and having fun with it. That is creating art. That is what that is. Don't stress about what everybody else is doing and don't stress over this time. Enjoy it. It's a happy place. So make sure we keep it that way. But remember what is most important guys for me always and still always be creative. And I will talk to you in the next one. Till then.